thank you for coming. I hope that few more will come very soon because uh, it's about 80 participants for this, uh, this, this competition. Okay, so we are going to start the competition talk now. Uh, before we start, for those who hasn't received their refreshment, please claim it at the counter after this. Eh? A few of you hasn't received, right? Uh, please get it from the ladies at the counter. For, for those who have not uh, uh, do not have the Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining our program today. The title for today is "Entry to Impactful Publication from the Perspective of Web of Science." And it is a great pleasure for us to welcome all of you, as well as our speaker for today, Ms. Chen Yulin. Okay. Some brief information about her. Julian worked as a solution consultant specializing in scientific and scholarly research. Uh, so she is responsible for the pre sales and post sales client engagement across Asia, especially focusing on Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines markets. Okay? So Ms. Julian has more than 5, 15 years of extensive uh, experience in, in STM publishing. STM stands for? Ah, science, technology, and medical. Thank you. Publishing covering various research fields such as medical education, medical informatics, and evidence-based medicine. So during her career, she has represented leading academics publisher such as Elsevier, Sage, and British Medical Journal, as well as well as a speaker at seminars and conferences across Asia Pacific. So she is a more, more notable uh, session with. Her, her specialization is inclu included best practices in publishing, clinical decision support, medical informatics, evidence-based and evidence-based medical medicine workflow. So during her career, Ms. Julie has held several positions such as as well as uh, salesperson as well as consultants. So her passion is she has a great passion for marketing, client engagement and academia. So combining with the experience in different publishing houses enable her to provide a unique lens of insight and information as well as information from the stakeholder perspective regarding academic research output and research evaluation. So, oh, before I forget, last but not least, she holds the Bachelor of Business in Business Administration Marketing from RMIT University. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Ms. Julie for the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, selamat pagi. Good morning. Hi. Um, very long introduction of myself, but ultimately, okay, uh, my role with Caribbean Analytics is to share with users um, how to use the resources that the library has subscribed to, like Web of Science, JCR, and also use that in your workflow. Okay. So um, I come from Singapore. So this morning, I crossed the causeway at about 7 in the morning to come to you guys, okay? Uh, and I'm very happy to be here. I think my second time here. Uh, yeah, the first time I was here, I did a training, uh, hands-on training for Web of Science. But today, uh, we will focus on the publication workflow, how you can get your research done through literature review, uh, to identify right journals that fit your manuscript, okay? And then for later on, if you're interested, I'll show you how to measure the impact of your research. Okay. So can I just have a show of hands? How many of you are postgraduate students? All postgraduate students. Okay. Any faculty members here? No. Not. Research office? Research office one. Okay. Sure. So uh, I'll, I think today's session will be very good for the postgraduate students. Last time when I was at university, uh, I didn't have the benefit of learning about the databases like Web of Science, uh, EndNote, or uh, JCR. So most of the time when I do papers, I just blindly do. And the professor says to reference this journal, okay, I reference this journal. And then that's about it. I don't do my own uh, review, okay. Nowadays, postgraduate students do a lot of work, okay. So without further ado, okay, this is the research cycle. Do you all agree that this is what 
a researcher should be doing. Let me know if you don't agree. <laughs> you have to think about your research approach, plan. Okay, this applies to all fields, uh, not just uh, not just science or social science. It applies to every single subject category. Okay, so you have to think and plan first. Then you move on to discovery. What is discovery? Discovery would be looking at okay, say for example, you're interested in doing research on Bitcoin. So nowadays, Bitcoin is the in thing, right? Bitcoin, uh, blockchain, and so on. You have to search for papers or research around those uh, terms so that you don't repeat the same research again. Am I right? Okay. Then you have to gather and analyze to see whether this topic is a trending topic. Will it benefit the community? Okay. And then you have to identify a journal that would be suitable for your research. Okay. Not all journals will publish research papers. Not all journals will publish review papers, for example. So you have to identify some of this uh, matrix so that you can pinpoint the right ones to reduce the chances of your paper getting rejected. Okay. After your paper is published, you will then want to share your paper, find out where it's going to be indexed, and to find out whether other people are citing your, your paper. Why is that important? Why is that important? Because you want to continue doing research. So if people cite your work, it shows two things. Number one, your research is worthwhile for them to read as well as to use. Okay? Number two, to further your research career, do you work alone? No, you find collaborators. So people who are interested in your work can be your potential collaborators next time. Okay? So my workshop today will cover two aspects. Literature discovery using Web of Science and going into the JCR journal citation reports to pinpoint journals. Okay? So Web of Science will be used in these two phases, discovery, gathering and analysis. Okay? There's some ways of identifying journals to publish also within Web of Science. This is particularly useful for those who are in the arts and humanities subject areas. Okay? Because the JCR only covers science and social sciences. All right? Then for journal citation reports, you can use for writing and publishing. Clear? Okay? So bear with me, it's quite a long session today, about two hours. Okay? Uh, that's why they provided refreshments for all of you. Okay? I don't mind if you have some snacks in between, but uh, I would like to have more engagement. So if you have any questions at any point in time, just raise your hand and ask. Okay? I don't want to be talking two hours. <laughs> okay, I'm going to flash four words on the screen. So just shout what you think this means to you in your work or in your daily life. Okay? It, there's no right or wrong answer. Right? So time. Can anyone just... Tell me what this means to you. Time. Engagement. Management. Time management. What else? Life. Yes, life is time, right? Okay. What else? For me, I have two kids. I have no time to myself. <laughs> time is money. Yes. Yes. Time is a road map. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yourself? Deadlines. Yes, time is deadlines. Correct. So everyone has a different meaning to this word, right? How this means to you. So keep that in mind. Time management. Time is limited. Okay. Accuracy. What does this mean as a researcher? Exactness. So your readings, things that you do has to be precise and to the point. <coughs> Okay? Because it's linked to time. You have lack of time. So whatever you do, you have to strategize so that your results will be accurate. Right? Novelty. <coughs> How about novelty? Newness or something. Yeah? So in research, novelty has to be innovation. Innovation. Research is moving. Yes? 
So every research that you do, every paper that you do, has to have a novelty impact to society. All right? And therefore, I said impact. So what is impact? Have to be used, useful for the, yeah? Yes, for the society, for the country. Okay? So, Web of Science will help in time management, accuracy, novelty, and impact. And as I go through the slides, you will understand why. Okay? So, in your first phase of research, you do literature review. Right? So, you start with a paper that is of interest. Usually, you start with one paper, right? Or you start with a search. Okay, so let's say you pinpoint one paper that you're interested in and is relevant to your research. Okay, how do you identify the related papers from them? Yes. yes. to sort the papers uh, which are related to your study and which are related to your work. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very co very uh, comprehensive answer. So the abstracts, the conclusion, and the keywords used in that article will give you an idea of how to find other related papers. Okay. So of course, the other thing is your reference list. Right? From the paper's reference list, okay, you'll be able to see related records. Okay. But are these references older or new? It's always the older papers. So if you're in a research area that is fast moving, okay, would you want to find more newer papers? Okay, so how would you do that? Search. Yeah, you do a search. Okay? So you do keyword searching. So on this screen I have three words. Okay, water spinach, kang kong and pak pong. Can anyone tell me what these three words are? I heard vegetables. Yeah. What type of vegetable? Green vegetable. Green vegetable. Green leafy vegetable. Are they the same vegetable? Not the same? Are you sure? Maybe same, maybe not. They are the same vegetable. It's just that it's different language. So water spinach is uh, English. Kang Kong, I think in Malaysia you call Kang Kong. And then Pak Kong is Thai. Yeah, okay, so they are the same vegetables. Don't get me started on the scientific names, okay? There are scientific names to everything in the world, okay? So why did I flash these three words for you? The reason is because when you do a keyword search, okay, if you search for water spinach, you only get papers that use the keyword water spinach. But you don't get papers about pakpong or kangkong, right? So it's the same thing. Keywords are very subjective. It depends on the author, which keyword they will use in their research paper. So how, how would you make sure that you don't miss out on other papers? That is the question. Okay? So that's why for citations, okay, we use citation networks rather than index. That's a normal index database. Okay? For Web of Science, we index the citations. What are citations? the reference list of every single paper. Okay? So why is that important? It's because through indexing the reference list, we are then able to see the connectivity between papers when they reference each other. Okay? So if paper A's reference has a paper from uh, paper B, has a reference of paper B, okay? so are they related somewhat? Quite related, right? Because they're citing each other. Okay, so that's how this citation network comes about. It is a more precise way of finding related research papers during your literature review. Okay. So this is just an illustration of how this citation network works. Okay. So from this paper A, this original paper that you have, you look at the references and it goes backwards to see your older reference list. Right? But at the same time, we are able to see the citation. So which new paper, which new research is citing this one? 
then you will see the tumor paper. Clear? Yeah? Okay. So that's what we call the backward citation okay, and the forward citations. So forward citations will take you to O or new? New. New research. Backward citations? O. Okay. And because we reference everything in, in an article, we are able to do some comparison. Do you, do you want to shop on Amazon? Do you want to do online shopping? So when you do online shopping, as you buy more things, right, the system somehow tells you to recommend the correct things to you. Right? So we have something similar where we look at the references. If they share more than one reference, for example, we will say that they are related. Okay? So we are able to see other related records. So they might not have cited each other yet, but they share similar references. So you are also able to see those papers. Here? Yeah? Okay. So this is one um, one article within Web of Science. Okay. So Web of Science will show you the abstract, okay, the title, the journal, okay, gives you the citation network. So the citation network is useful for forward citation, looking at time cited, who has cited that article, okay, the reference list, okay, and the related records. So why is this important, okay? citation indexing? Okay, I have a colleague of mine, his name is Dr. C. I'm not sure if any of you have met him before. Dr. C, you came for his workshop before, right? Or you, he taught you guys before. Dr. C, he's a chemist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he works in Clarivate Analytics and he shares with me some of the experiences of using the of science. So he did a, a quick search of a particular chemical compound, okay, and it's called sodium heparate. So he found a very old paper, 1979, older than a lot of us here, okay, but he felt that, okay, I want to see newer papers. How has that original 1979 paper evolved over time? So he will look at the citations. What are the newer papers that have cited it? And he found this 1996 conference proceeding from Web of Science, but this time it mentions low molecular weight heparin. Okay, a bit different, huh? So from so sodium heparin, it changed to low molecular weight heparin. And from there, he found an even newer paper, which is in 2015, so just three years ago. Okay, a highly cited paper around venous thromboembolic disease. Any mention of the chemical compound? No? So this was a chemistry paper. And this is a medical paper. Okay, so what does this show you? It shows that a citation network will be able to show you the connectivity across disciplines.